Hey everyone, DeBrestior here. Uh, some of you guys might be familiar with this layout. Um, so I think a while back in maybe one of my update videos, I mentioned that I backed a Kickstarter for Kingdom Death Monster, um, where they essentially, essentially called the 1.5 update. Um, I re recently got an update that said, you know, confirm my address and all that fancy stuff and pay for shipping. And I was like, and next thing I know it, uh, I just today got a package um, that had the 1.5 update. Um, I was actually pretty surprised that I got it so soon. Um, usually a lot of Kickstarters I back or, you know, things I order will usually do things like, you know, <laughs> give me a link, like a UPS link or something like that to be like, hey, you can track your uh, your package and all that stuff. None of that. It was just, there was a knock on my door. The guy had a package for me and it was from the people that did Kingdom Death Monster. Now, the uh, the backer thing I did is um, I got the just the update pack, which is a smaller box that just includes um, all the cards that all, pretty much includes the new rule book, which includes that changes a number of things as well as add an, a, a large number of things. It's hard. It's a uh, hardback, which is awesome. Uh, bad news is, of course, I don't currently have a PDF for it, so showing off any of that stuff will unfortunately not happen anytime soon worst case scenario i might do my own scans of the hunter of the hunt events but we'll deal with that later because i'm i still have to do a lot of stuff to get actually set actually set up on my module um for those who don't know anything about how i run kingdom death monster i usually run it through two programs i use uh, a browser i use browser version of uh, roll 20 and use that as for the general layout and making little character images and things like that. And I also use Tabletop Simulator to handle a lot of the AI deck and uh, hit location stuff. Um, unfortunately, I might not be able to do that for uh, the new monster that's that's been added, uh, but I will, like I said, I'll, I'll figure out what to do. And if I need to, I can try to make a new deck on uh, Tabletop Simulator. Hopefully people will update the module for me so I don't have to do it. Um, but I've spent a good chunk of today trying to um, get uh, all the, um, what do you call it? Um, essentially, I was getting all the cards scanned um, so I can start putting importing them into my Roll20 module so I can, you know, show this game off, uh, the updated game to everybody. But uh, for this video, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and just go over a bunch of changes that have been done, or at least some of them. I haven't read the entire book cover to cover. I kind of don't want to spoil everything for myself, even though I know what the final boss is now and I know what the ending is. But um, let's uh, let's dive right in. So I have my Roll20 module open just so we can see some compare and contrast if need be. And everything else is just going to be in scanned little folders here like this. So uh, real quick, let's go ahead and dive into the survivor sheet. Sorry, it's a little tear there. I screwed up the first little sheet, but that's okay. Uh, for the most part, the, sh the survivor sheet is practically the same. Uh, the, the major difference is there's a new survival skill known as Endor, which is an in-game ability, which we'll go into later. Um, there's the weapon proficiency, which you have to select before a hunt. I think you still have to be age level 1 to even get a proficiency, which kind of sucks. Uh, courage and understanding still work the same way. Uh, fighting arts are still the same, disorders, as well as abilities and impairments. But now they have this new section called Once Per Lifetime. And there's a checkbox for reroll use, which is because that is going to probably be the most common once per lifetime ability you're going to get. Um, and essentially, this section is supposed to keep track of any once per lifetime th triggers that you happen to get. Um, it's kind of small, unfortunately, because there's actually quite a bit of events you can potentially get. But um, for the most part, um, I did go and check the web version of the of the survivor character sheets. They haven't changed it, so I'll probably just make it as part of the abilities and impairments if I need to. Same thing for Endure. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And then this, this is the settlement character sheet. As you can see, it's a little bit different. You can see there's a lot more years uh, set up on it. Uh, most of this is pretty much the same. Um, they, they tied first day to the actual event timeline, but they did. it's still a card that you can look, that you read. Um, most of this is pretty standard. Oh, actually, let's see. Kingsman level 1, hand, then butcher level 2. Okay, so they changed the end tier stuff a little bit. Uh, used to be you had to, you, you would get a nemesis encounter that had like a level assigned to it, and then you would just pick which one you want to fight. Now they have it set up so you have to fight level 2 butcher and then level 2 Kingsman. Um, also, it looks like... Yeah, it looks like 
uh, as far as the timeline is concerned, there's no situation where you fight a level 2 or level 3 hand, or at least you're not forced to. But you are forced to fight a level 3 Butcher uh, um, and a level 3 Kingsman eventually. Now, there is the Washed event, which is used to be the in-tier event, and then you can you know force yourself to fight the Watcher sooner. But, as you can see, there is another Nemesis counter known as the Gold Smoke Knight. Um, it used... For those who don't know how uh, the original story ends, uh, well, I'm about to spoil it. <laughs> uh, essentially, when you beat the Watcher, it the lanterns go out, and it, it it changes your settlement a little bit, and it essentially becomes a okay, keep fighting level three monsters until you die. Um, now, it, now it's a little bit, it's still changed, but it's now set up in a way where it's like a almost like a gauntlet type type thing. I don't exactly know the details of it. Like I said, I don't want to spoil it to myself. But you're still going to be fighting level three monsters, but you you have a reason to survive now. You, there's a reason to keep fighting, um, and eventually it'll lead to fighting the Gold Smoke Knight, which is its own. It's the new final boss. It's the new monster that's been added to 1.5. Um, as for the milestone events, uh, they are still all the same. Down here, uh, the settlement locations, they're all still the same. Uh, principles are all still the same. Or, well, sorry, the principal choices are still the same. The principles themselves, some of them have changed. Um, and then on the back, most of it's pretty much the same, except for this lantern research level and monster volumes. I don't know what the monster volumes are. I know how to get them, but I don't know what they do. Um, I but I think it's probably part of the end tier stuff. Uh, essentially, the in, the new end uh, end game uh, is set up in a way where you can't. It's it it's designed to take into account what you did pri uh, up to that point, and you definitely have to prepare for it. It's no longer a situation where you can just win through just straight population or straight just having a twilight sword anymore. Or you might be able to. Who knows? But that. I, it seems to be, in order to do things like survive level 3 monsters and things like that, you might have to uh, take things like that into account. Anyway, uh, besides that, there's not really much change to the first day in of it. Uh, all the values are still the same. The only thing that got changed is it kind of explained the part 2 part a little bit differently. Um, from what I can tell as far as the settlement event is con or settlement phase is concerned is I think the steps for it have changed a little bit, um, and it it makes it a little bit more clear, especially for things like special encounters. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, go back to this real quick, and then close that. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into some of these. These will be some of these will be quick and easy. So new disorders. Now the disorders have not changed. Um, all they did was they the binge eating disorder is now just called binge eating. That is the only change. Quick and easy, like I said. Fighting arts. Uh, clutch fighter. The only thing that changed was they they changed bleed uh, bleed tokens into bleeding tokens. So that's just a change of the um, keyword there. Uh, so nothing really changed for clutch fighter. Leader, on the other hand, has changed. Um, whenever you encourage a survivor, they gain plus one speed token until end of round. That's still the same. Once per hunt phase, you may inspire another survivor. They can use your understanding and courage to resolve a hunt or story event. So. That can be very useful in certain uh, situations. Um, it can also say, help you, you know, keep characters alive. Because usually, when you trigger things that have requirements like that, it's usually for good things. Um, now, I think that is definitely a big change from the original fighting art. Yeah, the original fighting art literally just had the speed token benefit. Now it actually does a little bit more. Okay, and then rhythm chaser. Used to be uh, the first time you get a critical hit, you get a plus one evasion token. Now you get plus one evasion token at the start, the, the moment you start the, the showdown, and you will keep that evasion token unless you get knocked down. And if you get knocked down, if you have an instrument, you will still keep that evasion token. So it's uh, pretty useful. The only catch, of course, is it makes you lose all your evasion tokens, even if you, uh, even though you only gained one from the, the fighting art. But now the fighting art is useful. It essentially gives you plus one evasion at the start of the fight, and you don't have to rely on critical hits to trigger it. Very useful. It still has the restriction of no heavy gear. Completely standard. Um, now, for gear, let's go back to... Uh, let's see, is there... What ones can we dive into? Let's talk about terrain. 
Uh, so debris, only new, uh, only change for debris. Uh, there used to be a bug. <laughs> I guess you can call it a bug. Um, there used to be no value. There used to be no seven on this chart. So go four, six, then eight, nine, then ten. And there was, of course, a FAQ about that. Now they have fixed it. Uh, there is now seven through nine. So a seven will get you a bone blade. That is the only change, and it's a pretty good one. It makes it safer, I guess. Anyway, uh, do, 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 do. let's talk about settlement locations. So we got the Exhausted Lancer Horde. It has changed. Uh, exhausted Lancer Horde is from the end tier after you beat the Watcher. I'm not going to show it. I'm actually not going to show that card. Uh, but I will talk about the other changes to the other settlement locations. Um, now, one thing that kind of confused me about the 1.5 update is there are actually a lot more settlement locations than this. But I could not find any differences between the other ones. Um, there was, I know there was a few that got updated from the original board game. Um, that only got updated through, you know, online. But as far as I can tell, these are the only two that actually changed besides, of course, the Exhausted, exhausted Lancer Horde. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the Organ Grinder. So the only change with the Organ Grinder, as far as I can tell, is you can now craft stone noses, and they don't require any materials. It just requires endeavors. So essentially, you're going through your, your settlement and just breaking off no noses and collecting them. Um, stone noses are, are, of course, a new item, which we'll go into later. And then we have over here the Bonesmith. Um, the big change for the Bonesmith is there, the Bone Club takes three bone. So the idea of, you know, being able to just take some bones and hit something with it, like a blunt object, they've taken that into account. But they went to, uh, it's definitely a lot better uh, than you might expect. The Bone Club is an interesting item, especially for the early game. Uh, it definitely gives a little bit more variety. But uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So uh, let's talk, there's some new resources. These are just interior resources, uh, Black Lichen, Cocoon Membrane, and Lantern Tube. These are things you can only get at the end game, the new end game that is. So I'm not going to go to. I'm not going to go into depth about those. Um, let's go over secret fighting arts. So there's a few new secret fighting arts. Um, probably the ones that really stand out are synchronized strike. Uh, synchronized strike is a one you can actually get rather early, and it's actually really easy. It's in comparison to what you usually have to go through for Secret Fighting Arts, it's generally pretty easy to get. All you need, I believe, is drums, and you just have to endeavor for it. Um, now, the catch about Secret Fighting Strike is this is a team-based Secret uh, Fighting Art. It's very similar to uh, Tactics from the various Knight expansion packs. Um, and the way this works is you need two people with the same, this Secret Fighting Art, and they can uh, um, essentially it allows you to get bonuses for flanking. Uh, it, if you have one character on the opposite side of the monster, or you have two characters on opposing sides of the monster exactly across, like how that uh, diagram is showing, you get plus one accuracy and plus one strength for that attack. Now, it's limited to once per round, so if you use surges or anything like that, you won't be able to get the benefit a second time. Uh, Scholar of Death has some interesting aspects to it. Uh, on arrival, gain reroll tokens equals to the number of volumes recorded about your quarry. Hey, that's what I was wondering about. If your settlement has white lion volumes one, two, three, or and three, when you fight the white lion, you get three reroll tokens. Okay, that's actually really cool because um, that means you can essentially write volumes about monsters you've been fighting a lot, and then that will get you more prepared to fight tougher versions of that monster, or just make it easier to fight the level you're fighting at. Um, and yeah, it lets you do rerolls. I mean, there's been many situations where you roll that one when you really don't need to, and now you have a method of getting rerolls. Uh, Bone Whisperer um, essentially allows you to eat your friend, your dead friends, to get bonuses, <laughs> um, and you get uh, you get bonuses based off the number. Okay, it's uh, kill your survivor and roll one d ten plus your hunt XP. So it's based off your hunt XP. So if you're an experienced character, you probably don't want to do this. Uh, and then these bottom uh, three secret fighting arts, these are for saviors. Um, saviors have changed a little bit. Um, they're a little they're a little bit more reliable. At the same time, they're also not as stupidly powerful. Um, they don't grow as fast, uh, which means you get to use them more, but they don't get uh, they don't get those raw raw stat increases like they did before. Um, 
They've changed a little bit. Uh, blue is no, I believe blue is no longer range. Blue now just gives you crit based off the number of blue uh, affinities you have. So now their focus is, you know, just a little bit different. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull, I'm cracking open the book right now just to kind of give a little bit more detail. So we just need to find something about saviors. I don't remember where the savior section is, actually. Armored Stranger. Oh, here it is. Birth of Savior. All right, so the way it works is whichever one you pick will give you a stat increase when you get it. So for example, if you pick red, you'll get a plus one strength and plus one permanent red affinity. Then you'll get a trait that, or an abil a attribute that's um, very similar to what it was before. Like for example, red uh, gets the ability to auto hit a number of times equal to the uh, number of red affinities they have. Now they've changed it a little bit um, where they it get, the player now has control over that. So now when you activate that ability, you, you declare a number, and that number can be anywhere from zero to the number of the appropriate affinities you have. So for example, if you had three red affinities, you can go, okay, I'm going to activate uh, Keratosis, and, or Keratosis 3, which means my th I will auto hit three times. And yeah, pretty standard stuff. Um, now, as far as these fighting arts, you'll get these fighting arts when your savior hits level 2, or age 2. Um, and in the aftermaths and fights, you get one additional experience. So it's no longer they no longer get four experience every fight, they get two, which means you can use them for twice as long. They also don't like level up a million times. Uh, now the restrictions, of course, about um, saviors are still kind of the same. You can't use other gear. Um, you can't um, if you retire, you cease to exist. And now it's set to if you get white secret, which is if you get ten understanding, you also cease to exist. So you don't got, you do not want these guys to get maxed out uh, understanding. It also means they can't get any of the benefits of white secret. Um, now for the most part, uh, red is still the same thing. It is automatic hits. Oh, actually, I see what they I see how it works. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm kind of learning as I read here. Um, so I stated you get two hunt XP every fight. That is true until you activate your ability. If you activate your ability, like Keratosis, the auto-hitting, um, you will get plus. You will get more hunt XP. So the more you use your special ability, and the more powerful you use it, the more hunt XP you get. So for example, if you do Keratosis 3, you auto-hit 3 times, but at the end of that fight, you gain 3 experience. And I, I'm, I'm assuming it stacks. Uh, so, let's see. Yeah. It even says, like, when you declare this, you're supposed to do it in a loud, booming voice. So you're supposed to be like, Keratosis X, where X is the number. Um, so anyway, so the way saviors work is you can make them, they're a little bit stronger, and they have a special ability, but that special ability has a price. So that's the catch of it. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Now, real quick about the other ones. The green one is they get plus one evasion and green affinity, and they can um if they ever suffer any damage you can you can do um you can buff up your um your armor in all locations and let's see and then for blue the way it works is you can increase your luck uh bef when you before making a wound attempt you can increase your luck so they're they've been nerfed a little bit, but they're also a little bit more reliable as far as them staying, sticking around a little bit longer. Um, and like I said, at age 2, they each get their specific fighting art, so they can concentrate. Uh, the way concentration works is you spend a round concentrating, and that's all you do. And then after that, you can activate some special fancy ability, such as uh, all survivors gain armor in all hit locations. Um, now, of course, this has a price. You gain 6 uh, hunt XP. Um, and if you if you still exist after you gain that hunt XP, you gain priority target. So you get some fancy, ma essentially mystical abilities that just let you do crazy shit. So pretty, pretty standard stuff. Anyway, enough rambling about that stuff. Next, let's talk about done resources. Uh, let's do principles. So like I said, principles have changed in more ways than one. There is a new principle called Destiny, which is an in-tier um, uh, principle, which essentially gets you access to Endor. What Endor does is you can spend several survival 
minus your luck to ignore se severe injuries. So you can expend a lot of your vast amount of survival, which you'll, you'll have tons by the end of the game, um, to survive a bit better. Anyway, uh, cannibalized has been clarified. Um, it now states that if a survivor is lost, ceases to exist, or ex exiled, you do not get the resource. So now that's completely 100% clarified. It does nerf can cannibalize a little bit, but it makes sense. Like, obviously, the way I played it was if you if you I considered anything like that to be considered death. Uh, the way I justified it originally was you know you just take belong the, any remaining belongings they had, but this is the way they do. They're, they this is the rules call, so I will stick with that. Uh, romantic has been changed. Uh, I believe originally romantic allowed you to um, do two innovations. Uh, per settlement phase, which was 100% useless, because by the time you get this, you generally don't need that many. Also, it just it costs a lot of resources to do that many um, innovations, so it wasn't it wasn't great. Um, real quick, I'm just checking one other thing. Like it's just a thought that just came up in my head. Okay, no, it's fine. It's still the same. All right. Uh, beyond that, so now it's been changed to. Anytime you get a random fighting art, you draw three cards and you pick one, which is pretty cool. Um, especially in, if you're adding all the expansions, that gives you a little bit more variety. And then, of course, the big one, Survival of the Fittest. So, uh, one of my biggest complaints about uh, Kingdom Death Monsters was the Intimacy Story event. Um, it wasn't just the Survival of the Fittest, it was the Intimacy Story event itself. I've, you know, I've done a video on it, I rambled about it, and did math on it. And it was... It has issues, and unfortunately, Intimacy Story Event is unchanged. It is the exact same table. No change has been made to that. But they have made a significant effort in making Survival of the Fittest better. So, key thing about Survival of the Fittest, uh, the biggest issue about Survival of the Fittest is the issue was before was it was it was treated as a non-choice. The creator made it a non-choice, and it was supposed. To, some people tried to justify it as a hard mode, but it was. It wasn't even a hard mode. Like it was, it was difficulty that you had zero control over. It was all RNG, and the idea behind Survival of the Fittest was, you know, supposed to be you have less population, but they were stronger. But the problem was, is Survival of the Fittest the benefit? You wouldn't get the benefit unless you successfully do intimacy, which you couldn't because the odds were against you. Because Survival of the Fittest makes you take the lowest result. Now, it's better. I can't say if it's. I, I'm almost willing to say it's good enough to pull off what you want, to pull off the idea, to pull off the idea of having a small population that is extremely good at surviving. That is, I think that concept is a lot, been fleshed out a bit more, and that's kind of the situation it's in right now. So key things, all current and newborn survivors gain plus one strength and plus one evasion. Originally, it was just plus one strength for newborns. Now it applies to the people that make this decision as well, which makes 100% sense uh, sense because they're the ones that, you know, made the decision and decided to toughen themselves up. Still get the plus one strength, which is completely fine. You get the survival limit as always. The plus one evasion is, I think, a really important change. Um, I mean, evasion, you know, it's, it's still a little luck-based, but that does... That, that changes a 90% chance of getting hit by a white lion to an 80%, which you might think, okay, that's not fantastic, but that means there's, it's doubling the chances that you will, that, that white lion will miss, <laughs> which is nice. Um, but it also, is, it, it, like I said, it flushes out that idea that these guys are trained and capable of, that are, that they are focused on survival and anyone that can't dodge a dodgeball is not going to be part of this particular, um, society. The other thing they did is once per lifetime, a survivor may reroll a single res roll result. They must keep this new result. And that is amazing. There are so many situations where we got a settlement a settlement event, a bad roll in a combat, or a hunt event that just completely screwed over a, a character. With this you can be like, alright, I'm popping my I'm popping my once per per lifetime and re-roll in that result and maybe I'll survive. There's literally no reason to not use it because if it's a situation where your character is going to die you might or be crippled, you might as well use it. This also makes it uh, a little bit more viable to do intimacy roll uh, events. You're still doing rolling twice and picking the lowest, but uh, at the very least, one of those two characters involved in it can at least re-roll one of those die results, and that could be enough to get you to stabilize that a bit. 
So the other thing that's not on this card is there's a number of events. Um, there's a few events on the hunt table or the, the generic hunt events that have special quirks to it that apply to Survival of the Fittest. Originally, there was only one event that had anything that to do with Survival of the Fittest, and that was when the, the hand visits. Now there are certain hunt events where if you get this, if you have Survival of the Fittest, it will change things. For example, there's a hunt event that I'm terrified of known as Feet, which is a, an event where if all of your characters are insane, you, you, that hunting party dies because they fall off the world. If you have now that particular hunt event, if you have Survival of the Fittest, all those characters will survive. They will get some sort of bonus. They will break all their jaws, but they will not party wipe, which is amazing. It's Survival of the Fittest is I, it's interesting enough for me to be willing to try. I, it might still be a hard mode, but it has cool stuff. Like the ability to reroll for every single one of your newborn characters and your current characters, I, I think that's great. I mean, there's been so many situations where I just get a bad roll. And I and if it's like some sort of turning point, at least now I have some sort of way to mitigate that. And like I said, it flushes out the idea of having a small, durable population. Now, like I said, they still get themselves killed by screwing each other, but like I said, the rerolls kind of help mitigate that at least a little bit. Uh, like I said, the NTBC event is still the same as always, and I guess they're not going to change it. But they made a really good effort for Survival of the Fittest. I will probably try that in the next in, when I actually do a playthrough. All right. I apologize for how long this video is. Like I said, I really just wanted to talk about all this fancy stuff and go over as many details as I can. Anyway. Speaking of details, let's go over innovations. So there's two pages of this. There, as far as I know, I don't think there's any new, no, there's no new innovations, but there are a lot that have been changed. Uh, some of these, I'm not sure if they've changed too much. I will do my best to kind of look at them as they come. So storytelling, nope, which one was it? Song of the Brute, here it is. Okay, so we'll, we'll do some comparing and contrasting here. So Forbidden Dance, um, it's now been uh, it's been changed a little bit. Um, it now has the potential of any time you, once per lifetime, a character can perform, attempt to do the Forbidden Dance, which can either get them plus one permanent evasion, minus one movement, or the King Step Secret Fighting Art. So now some of these fighting art, secret fighting arts are a lot, are at least possible. Through the, through the use of your innovations. The other thing Forbidden Dance does, of course, is it gives you a bonus uh, a bonus to your synchronized strike, which makes sense because you're generally going to have drums to get Forbidden Dance, so it actually works well together. They actually sync up. Um, and essentially, yeah, if you have synchronized strike and you, attempt, if you, and you use it, you can re-roll your attack rolls once. Um, really good stuff. That actually... It, it gives a reason to go towards music uh, innovations. It changes your fighting style to be more team-based, and it gives you the ability to, yeah, you work as a team and take advan take advan full advantage of your Seek and Eye Strikes. Uh, Saga has changed a little bit, as I kind of showed. Uh, Saga originally was two hunt experience and two sur uh, survival. Now it provides plus two courage, plus two understanding, and plus two hunt experience. So it gives an additional little bonus there, and puts some borderline on enough to trigger their own little personal milestone events. Drums, uh, the major thing they did with drums is uh, they made it so you didn't have to select, you don't have to roll for it anymore. It used to be super unreliable. Um, they did take out the ability to remove uh, disorders, uh, but you now can, you have full control over it. You can now either get plus two insanity, plus two survival, or you can get rhythm chaser, which is now a, a better fighting art. It's essentially plus one evasion or you can get the secret nice strike. So with this, you can spend endeavors to get fighting arts. And with, like I said, Rhythm Chaser is essentially plus one evasion. It's really good. Um, and secret nice strike, like I mentioned before, is you'll need two people, you can get two people to get it and you'll be good to go. Song of the Brave. Uh, Song of the Brave used to be just a plus one to your role um, when you go to Overwhelming Darkness. It also had some benefits in certain expansions. Um, 
but now they've changed it. They've now made it so on arrival, each non-death survivor may remove one negative attribute token. So if you get any negative attribute tokens through hunt events and things like that, you, have, you can remove some of them. And now it's no longer a plus one roll. It's now every non-death survivor can pick Path of the Brave, which is the safest of the overwhelming darkness routes. So it's really good. Heart Flute. You might notice a kind of a trend here. Most of these, all of these so far have been uh, music based. Like they've really buffed up the music, the music uh, tech line. So the heart flute. Uh, originally, the heart flutes uh, either killed you or it forced it made you do like a um, special showdown. Now it's been set up so it buffs up your synchronized strike. So once again, all so far the a good chunk of the music uh, tech line buffs up synchronized strike. It's all about team based synchronized, you know, essentially dancing, taking advantage of evasion, all that good stuff. Now, synchronized strike. Uh, you can, when you there, anyone that's doing the attack assist can spend survival to change the reaction from a regular reaction to a reaction failure. Um, so this means that usually there's some reactions that you have no control over that trigger, no matter what. You can now do it so you can change that reaction to, or you can change that reaction from a wound attempt, uh, a successful wound to a failure, which is pretty powerful. Uh, of course, limited once per attack. All right. Uh, besides that, um, the thing you can do with this is add a special. Yeah, the ne it allows you to fight um, nemesis monsters for you know benefits and stuff like that. So if you want, the, this is the only way you can fight the hand uh, the hand at level two and three. Is you have to, of course, do it. Uh, do this junk. Cooking has been buffed a bit. Um, they still have the stupid cooking as far as the actual cooking event is still the same. It's been clarified. It states that you only one survivor gets the benefit, which means you're spending like four resources to give someone like a plus one. Uh, I think one of them does remove all disorders, which can be kind of nice. But for the most part, the cooking event is still kind of awkward to use. But um, having cooking does give you uh, some of the events like the um, herb gathering event has been buffed up a little bit. So you actually get more out of it. Um, so you still get the survival limit, um, and now you can spend organ and bone, um, to negate starvation, which is an effect that happens if the monster, uh, leaves the board, I believe, or if you just get to the end of the hunt track and never run into the monster. Uh, so that can make it a little bit safer for you to attempt to do high level monster encounters, um, cause obviously level three encounters, the biggest, uh, detriment to that is not the monster itself, but the fact they can literally just leave the hunt board very easily. Um, the, the other major thing that cooking does is they, it's so far the only innovation that gives you endeavors. So you get plus one endeavor every time you go on this. So even if you come back from a part, even if you have a party wipe, you will still have at least one endeavor due to cooking. Partnership. Partnership sucked in the previous game. It literally was useless. Like you, you would spend so many endeavors to get the partnership trait and it would do not, it practically does nothing. It would, it would, you select two characters to be partners. And what it did is you had to be adjacent. You had to be right next to each other, next to the monster. And if you did that, you would get plus one strength. And if you die, if your partner died, you suffer big issues. Now, um, the change, it's been changed to be slightly better. Now, if you have partners and they, and they go together and they arrive at, a, at the fight, they get maximized survival. So there's actually slightly bit, some reasons to go for partnership. It could be used in a situation where you just don't have a lot of departing survival, or you're in a situation where you just spent all your survival during the hunt events, and you can now go straight into um, the fight with some partners that have maxed out survival. So it's better, still probably not worth learning <laughs> compared to some of the other stuff, but it's better. Uh, sacrifice, uh, it's been changed a little bit. It used to be a way to uh, manipulate the um, the washer timeline. Um, now that's no longer the case. And to be honest, um, the only thing that's I guess benefit uh, beneficial is you can lose all your sanity, insanity and remove one of your disorders. It's not. It's, it wasn't really good in, uh, before, and to be honest, it's probably still not that great. Uh, records. So records is a way to get the Scholar of Death secret fighting art. 
So all you have to do is spend an endeavor, and bam, you get it. I think originally records oh, was garbage, like major garbage. Um, I think it was storytelling. There it is. Records. Originally, records uh, allowed you to manipulate the timeline. It also allowed you to reset your character, essentially new game plus your character, um, and learn fighting arts from other characters. Now, instead, it does... Um, this is where you can make the volumes about monsters. So you can either do the, you can get the monster of the volumes, um, and essentially you can get volumes one through three, the the number representing the monster level that you fight. So now there's another reason to fight higher level monsters because it makes you better at fighting the monster. You actually get more rerolls if you have that certain uh, traits. And like I mentioned, Scholar of Death is always amazing. So um, other fancy things we also get is storytelling. Um, storytelling is a little bit better. I say that without actually reading it. So was it pictograph, symposium, storytelling? There it is. So this is what storytelling originally was. It was white speaker. Um, you can spend three resources to get plus one understanding, and there's plus two survival and plus two insanity. Now it gives you gain plus one in understanding. Period. You don't have to spend resources for it. You can now. This is based off a die roll. All the party survivors get plus three insanity, or you can get the white speaker event. The white speaker event still sucks, uh, from what I've read, read of it. Um, the, the page is a little bit different, but it, I think it's still not great. It's one of those situations where it's like a, it was, it's a very low percent chance that you'll actually get something good out of it. Uh, then again, if you have rerolls, maybe it might be worthwhile. Uh, face paint is, I think, still the same. Let's find out. Let's. What's face? What's face paint do? Face painting. Oh, it's changed a little bit. Okay. So um, you can still get the laughing stock, but now you can get death paint cer ceremony, which is plus two survival and plus one insanity instead of just plus three insanity. Um, you still get the accidental mess, and you can get uh, plus one to all roll intimacy story event rolls. Sculpture. Uh, sculpture originally gave you very very little. Um, it used to give plus one survival limit, and essentially departing survivors get plus two survival against nemesis encounters. Not that useful unless you're really striving for survival. Um, what it does now is you can spend an endeavor to create a statue, and that person that creates the statue skips the next hunt and loses a fighting art, but you record this fighting art on the settlement record sheet, and the settlement can only have one inspirational statue. And also it notes that secret fighting arts are not fighting arts. So that's something to be aware of. Um, actually, that's a key thing to be aware of. Good to know. That means they don't apply towards the fighting art limit. Anyway. Um, but yeah. Uh, now one key thing, of course, it states clearly that you cannot make another. So this is a one-time thing. So you can't just change it. But once you create it, and you, that person gave up their fighting art for it, anyone can spend, endeavor on this new inspirational statue roll 1d10 on a 6 plus, they get that fighting art. So if you get a really good fighting art, like, I don't know, freaking... freaking Combo Master or something like that, you can be like, alright, you know what, let's make sure everyone else can get Combo Master. Or, you know, Extra Sense. Be like, okay, you know what, we put forth the effort, got lucky, got, got Extra Sense, let's make a statue of it and get everyone to get it. It's a 50-50 chance when you try to learn it, but if you got nothing better to do, and it's honestly, it's free, it only costs an endeavor, it's definitely a lot better than what it was before. Pictograph. Uh, Pictograph has been nerfed. It's been, well, I'll say it's been clarified. Um, originally, it said practically any time during the hunt or showdown phase, it, you can run do the runaway event. So this led to little cheesy things where you like use all your attacks, and if you fail some sort of roll that will end up getting you killed, you just do the runaway event. Now it's been stated that you can only do runaway events at the start of a survivor's turn or um, after a hunt event has been resolved. So you can't just abuse it anymore. I don't mind it. It's It, it clarifies it. It's a good thing to do. Uh, pottery. Uh, pottery was kind of meh. Um, originally you got pottery to get a... Um, you would get pottery just to get uh, access to one of the um, new 
you would get you do get access to a certain settle, uh, settlement location, which I have just noticed that you can't get anymore. Hmm. Huh. That is concerning. I'm right now looking through the settlement cards to see if there's one that I missed, maybe. Nope. None F yeah. Okay. So I'll show you my confusion. If we go to Sculpture, there's pottery. This is what pottery originally was. It's plus one survival, and anytime you're in a situation where your settlement loses all resources, you can keep up to two, which is practically worthless. Um, but it also had the endeavor where if you spend three organs and one scrap, you get the barber surgeon. Now it doesn't have that. Instead, it just it's plus one survival. You can do spend an endeavor to get and one organ resource to change it into a love juice, which is actually really cool. That means you, that's a more reliable way of getting intimacy instead of relying on auguries all the time. But you can only do it once per lantern year. You can also spend one herb resource in a hide res uh, to gain a hide resource, which means if you're one of those characters that had like 30 bajillion acanthus herbs, you can now turn those into hide resources, which is actually pretty useful, but it's still just once per lantern year. So I'm not exactly sure what happened to the uh, organ or the surgeon, uh, the barber surgeon. I don't know how to get it now. Um, so that's a little concerning. I don't know how, how, yeah, I have no idea how you're supposed to get it now. I'll have to look it up. But like I said, that was part of the reason why I'm kind of doing this video is to see all the stuff. All right. Um, uh, we got monsters and fighting arts still, or not fighting arts, uh, gear. Let's go over gear. So real quick, let's go over the gear itself. So few uh, there's a few new items. Um, there's the oxidized armor set or oxidized equipment, um, which is essentially you take um, most of the lantern gear, which was iron stuff, and you convert it into you can. There's a way to convert it into oxidized, which is better. So for example, the lantern dagger is two seven one, does uh, has sharp and paired, and it's early iron. A lot of the uh, iron stuff was good but unreliable. Um, if you ever rolled a one on an attack roll. With an iron we a uh, early iron weapon, you lost all your attacks. Um, so yeah, you got the um, sharp and all that stuff. But if you have it oxidized, it becomes more accurate, does more damage, faster, and you can also get you know other benefits for it. So yeah, oxidized oxidization gets you more stuff. Uh, they've added some new keywords like arrival and deflect. Uh, deflect is essentially how block it's supposed to work. Um, now you get things like deflect tokens, and um, yeah, you can do some pretty fancy stuff. So essentially, you would you would activate this ability, you'll get deflect tokens, and every time you get hit, you can spend a deflect token to ignore that hit. Anyway, uh, so quick changes. The screaming set is better, so there's more reasons to fight the screaming antelope. Um, in fact, the Screaming Antelope at higher levels actually has more potential loot than the White Lion. But anyway, the Screaming Skirt now gives you plus one to uh, severe injury rolls uh, when you take injury rolls to the waist, which is really good. Um, the Screaming Horns, or I think originally it didn't do anything. Uh, the Screaming Horns is still exactly the same as it was before. Oh, actually, it's something else to note. Uh, the Screaming Skirt is now three armor instead of two. So that's something else to note. So the horns and the, the the helmet and the waist armor is actually three, and the rest is two. Uh, screaming leg warmers uh, on revi revival, um, you get plus three insanity because your feet hurt. Uh, the screaming coat is still the same as it was before. Yeah, it's the exact same as before. Screaming bracers, now it's... Uh, actually really good for a gathering type character. It allows you to um, take that, uh, it allows you to add a Gamkathis plant terrain card to the showdown. And uh, anytime you activate terrain at all, you get plus two to the results. So you, Screaming Bracers lets you gather stuff e a lot easier. Uh, Lantern Dagger. I'm not sure what they changed on the Lantern Dagger at all. Did they change anything? Let's find out. Gear. Blacksmith, Lantern Dagger. So originally it's 271. Weapon, Melee Dagger. Finesse Metal. 
when an attack ro result is one, cancel all any hits, and, and it's exactly the same. I, I guess the, I mean, the art style, I guess, changed a little bit, but yeah, it looks like it to be exactly the same. Uh, same thing for the Hollow Sword, it looks like it's still the same. Uh, Horus Ring. During the aftermath, if you died or ceased to exist, you may archive it to reset the, ca the campaign to the previous settlement phase. So that's a way to rewind time, essentially. Sonic Tomahawk, I believe, is still the same. Uh, the Bone Pickaxe and the Bone Sickle have been improved. They now give you... Um, they're no longer fragile or frail, um, so they don't break as easy. Um, as far as the mining and herbalism, uh, herb gathering events, they have been improved as well. Uh, the Bone Pickaxe you can still potentially lose pretty easily, but not as easily as it was before. Um, but yeah, it's a, they're a little bit more reliable. Um, there's the Skull Helmets, which is... It's, I think it's just been clarified, so if you ever suffer a, head, uh, a, a severe head injury, you destroy it. That's all you really need to know about it. The Final Lantern is an in-game item, so we're not going to go over that. Um, but here's the Bone Club. So this thing requires three bone to get, and all you need is the um, bone smith or bone, whatever it's called, bone smith. Yeah, um, it's two speed, six accuracy, five strength. It is two handed and heavy, and it's a club. So this is the earliest you can get a club weapon now. It is two handed, so you can't use shields with it. It's heavy, so you can't really use it with things like rhythm chaser and things like that. But it has five strength, which is pretty significant in the early game. I mean, one of the most frustrating things to deal with in the early game is not having high enough strength to actually consistently harm the monster. Now, the way they mitigate the benefit of the five strength is it's cumbersome, which means you can't. You have to. It costs a move and an action to attack with it. But it does go, It does explain that you can use it with in conjunction with things like pounce and charge, which means anytime you you have a cumbersome weapon, take advantage of the fact that of uh, pounce and charge. Um, so if you have like the screaming set all set up, like you have, um, slam and all that stuff, yeah, take advantage of it. Anyway, uh, besides that, here's a few new items as well. Uh, the Forsaker mask now will kill the person that gets it. Um, so it has a price, unfortunately. The stone noses, uh, that was the new item I mentioned before that only takes endeavors to make. On arrival, the start of the showdown, you get plus one survival, plus one insanity. Really good, especially in the early game when you don't have very much insanity. Survivor Lantern is for endgame. First aid kit has been improved. On arrival, all survivors get plus three survival, and you can spend an action to remove bleeding and or a negative attribute token from yourself or an, a, another survivor. The drum has been improved. Um, it's still a noisy instrument, but on arrival, all survivors get plus one insanity. And if you are if you do encourage and you have a drum, it affects everybody. So instead of having to do a chain chain line of encouraging to get everyone back onto their feet. This person can literally just use it, use one survival on his own or her own and wake everybody up. The claw head arrow, I think it's just been clarified. Yeah, I think it's, oh, actually it has been changed. The claw head arrow now has a blue tab. I think that's what changed. It's the the thing they changed is they added a blue tab to it. They also added a blue tab to the cat cut bow. Um, so that's really good. I like the fact they've added more affinity tabs. I think that's important. Um, the cat cut bow um, has a blue affinity tab, like I mentioned before. It also has the ability to aim. You can um, you can reduce your attack speed by one and gain plus two accuracy with it, um, which is really good because that means you can be more accurate with your fancy fancy bow. Uh, I don't think you can use it in conjunction with the claw head arrow, but that's okay. And then the whis whisker harp, it gives plus one survival on pawn arrival to all survivors. And it's been improved. It used to be very, very limiting as far as how effective it can be. Let's see, cat, it was called whisker harp. Originally it was seven plus and three plus if it was a white line to get rid of a mood. Now it is six plus for everybody to get rid of a mood so 50 50 a lot more reliable okay uh so that's take care of all of those so really the last thing that actually sorry there was a 
few other things. Um, speaking of clubs, we have new changes to the specialization of club. It used to give, uh, it used to make all clubs paired. That was the specialization ability. Now on perfect hits, you double the result of your wound attempt on the first hit select, selected hit location. So now perfect hits can allow you to hit really, really hard on that first hit, uh, which is really good. Uh, Cause that, I mean, that essentially, that means you're, you're looking at a, if you're using that uh, bone club and you get a perfect hit with it, your first hit, assuming you don't roll a natural one, has a minimum of 14 strength because it's five strength and you, you roll you have to roll a minimum of two. So that's seven, double it, that is 14 strength. So that's a pretty handy thing for specialization. I mean, having paired on everything was okay, but it wasn't really worthwhile. Um, special mastery. Um, when a club master attacks with a club, if a successful wound attempt total is greater than or equal to twice the monster's toughness, inflict an additional wound. All survivors, yeah, okay. So essentially when you hit hard, um, you can do double damage. And then the final thing is some new changes to some armor sets. Lantern armor is a little bit better now. Um, on arrival, you get maximized survival. Uh, also, any clubs you're using gain sharp, which means they do an additional 1d10 strength, which is really it really uh, synchronizes well with the, uh, the the changes to the specialization as well as having some heavier uh, club weapons. Screaming armor has been changed. It used to be two armor to all hit locations if you're insane. Now it's just you get it, period. Um, also, after you slam, you can spend movement, uh, spend a, an action to move one space and activate a melee weapon with two strength. Uh, and if you wound with a spear doing this, uh, you can apply that wound roll result to the next selected hit location. So essentially you can skewer essentially two hit locations at the same time. Um, really, really good. Uh, it makes the Screaming Armor even better. I think Screaming Armor was okay. It's just the problem was most people just preferred doing the White Lion set or preferring the leather. Um, I think with this, it can give you a lot more versatility than leather, which is kind of nice. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely an improvement. Anyway, I'm an hour, almost an hour in, so I'm just going to quickly go over some of the monster stuff. Um, most are just kind of some minor changes. Um, yeah, some of these are just clarifications of how some of the effects work. I think the Butcher is Invincible has been changed. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at that. Down here on the bottom with monsters. Yeah, uh, it looks like they they nerfed Invincible. It used to be a six plus that would allow to ignore it. Now it's eight plus, so that's good. So that doesn't it's no longer half your hit. It's now only thirty percent of your hit, wounds will fail. It's only instead of half. Uh, kick has been nerfed, finally. Uh, kick is still mostly the same, but instead of doing a draw card action uh, at the end, it does basic action. Uh, and but they've replaced one of the kicks with infinite kick. So there is a possibility where if you have infinite kick, it can happen. But it's now far less likely since if you're familiar with the AI cards for Butcher, there's two kick cards. Now there's only one and an infinite kick. Uh, Furious Crack is pretty much the same as it was before. Next, Indomitable. Indomitable is a trait that's generic. It goes on any level 3 monster. And what this does is when a monster is attacked, attacks or is attacked, it stands at the end of that attack. So, but it only, it, only if it attacked the monster, not minions. Um, so it used to be monsters got up at the, at the start of their turn when you knock them over and you just, you know, when you knock down a monster, you just wail, wail on them. Now, level three monsters, it only really applies for the next person that attacks it. So be aware of that. Uh, some changes to, looks like this is the Kingsman. Uh, the Kingsman, uh, they changed Coup de Gras a little bit. Targets random, target a random knockdown survivor in range if there are no... Okay, that's still, I think that's mostly the same. We'll go ahead and clarify that real quick. Kingsman, AI cards, that's an advanced card, I believe. Nope, it's a regular, I forgot. 
Full move towards targets. All survivors are doomed. All right, so still the same, I think. It's just a little bit. It's. It looks like just the art has changed. Yeah, it looks like just the art had changed for that. And then the other thing is Silent Hymn. All survivors start uh, at the start of the turn. All survivors gain a minus one movement token. When a survivor is reduced to zero, they uh, suffer a random brain trauma, and then it starts over. Um, you can also spend a survival to remove those tokens. So that was... Oh, it's a it's a tr it's a special trade, isn't it? Yep, it is. Yep, it's practically the same. It just it's it's clarified in a way that's a little bit easier to read. It looks like good stuff. Next, uh, these are new basic action cards. Uh, some of them might have been changed. I think some of them might just be keyword changes, like bleeding tokens instead of just bleed tokens. Um, of course, there's some for the new character as well. Not sure. Nothing too special there. Uh, new trait cards, or stat cards. Uh, most, of them, most of them, the main changes is the Indomital has been added to uh, rank level 3 monsters. Here's the Gold Smoke Knight. This is the newest monster. Um, he uses all of his AI cards, no matter what. Has a bunch of traits, including Indomitable. Has 27 toughness. Have fun. Uh, changes to the Screaming Antelope. Uh, looks like they clarified some of the things with Tiny Hands. Uh, it used to be, I think it knocked, it said it knocked away your weapon or something like that. Now it makes rude gestures to you and gives you plus one insanity and you lose composure. So you have to spend an action to regain senses. So it's, it's a little bit easier to understand now. Because it seemed weird to have things that get disarmed that can't really be disarmed type of situation. Um... Still the same thing for Palette, I think. Actually, I think they changed Palette a little bit. Screaming Antelope, hit locations. It looks like it's just been clarified. Yeah, it looks like they just clarified it. Uh, Tiny Hands has been clarified as well. Diabolical, I think, has been changed a little bit. I think it's just the art style. Uh, and then changes to the hunt events for the Screaming Antelope. They mentioned that they really wanted to make the Screaming Antelope better, which is weird because I actually enjoyed fighting the Screaming Antelope because I like it's like a pinata that you beat the crap out of and get a bunch of shit out of it. But uh, we got looks like it's a dead amp. Okay, so they added one. They added a hunt event. They added dead amp antelope, and then there's grazing field. So grazing field is this one. It looks like it's okay. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty much the same. Oh, I see. It's it, it just changed the key. It's not. It's uh, instead of being bone sickle, it's now called sickle. That looks like that was the only change for that. And they added, like I said, they added one new one, which is called Dead Antelope. The survivors are struck by the scent of rotting meat wafting from a hulking corpse ahead. Uh, it's essentially the dead. It's essentially like the dead, the lion cub event. It's a, it's an opportunity to get some free resources, but you could end up fighting something a white lion essentially. Um, and you can also add a dead monster terrain card to it. Um, so yeah, I think. I think the addition of the dead antelope is a pretty good one because that makes it a little bit more profitable for the hunt events. Anything else of note? Um, this is a change for the watcher fight. I'm not going to go into it yet. And then there's some been some changes. These are some significant changes to the white lion. Um, there are more opportunities to gain understanding from different uh, lost hand events. The big thing, though is the, there is no more infinite combo. You can no longer do the plus one understanding infinite combo. Um, you can Each of these benefits you can only get once per lifetime. So at the most you can get three understanding from this thing assuming it still has access to all three of these cards when it lost its hand. 
completely fair. I think that's a fair enough thing to do. Some of the changes, of course, is the addition of the bleeding tokens. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, yeah, I think that's all the changes there. And yeah, that is all of the changes, as far as I can tell. Um, like, there's some changes obviously in the book. Like I said, I'll see them when they come up. But yeah, um, I'll be making an effort to update my module, and I hope to go ahead and do another one of these playthroughs. Unfortunately, it'll probably just be me by myself, because getting people together reliably to play this game is as difficult as it usually is for me to get a Dungeons & Dragons group together. So, it is what it is. But like I said, I look, I look forward to this. There's also more stuff to come, but it's going to be further, probably, probably next year, most likely. Um, we'll get some more updates. Um, it'll, I did get the, I did go with the contribution level that, um, got me all of like the little bonus quirk things that, that they did a little game with where he rolled randomly to reveal them. Uh, those will add a bunch of little tiny things to the game that will be kind of fun to mess around with. But, uh, yeah, I am the depressed Eeyore. This was your kind of brief, uh, overview of the 1.5 update. See you guys next time.